No one tells you this about Toronto real estate. No one will tell you this about Toronto real estate, but I will. Hello friends, this is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Realtor, and today we're going to talk about things that are not talked about. Why? Because they're very, very important for the future of your investment, for your future of finance, for your future of your home and your life. All right. So, Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate Agent, Mortgage Broker 2. This is my Twitter, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan. You get all the updates, everything that I post, uh, funnels in here. So whether it's a video, an article on many other websites, interview, whatever it is, you'll find it on a Twitter. So please go here and follow here. Like 83 chance your assignment is not selling. This is not this is not a joke. This is real. Most assignment sellers don't know what they're doing. Um, fashion house condos, King West condos, that's where you can find me. UrbanRealtyToronto.com is where I post, I post long form articles. I've been posting long form articles with videos to give more information I can but anything that is important to you as an investor. So for example, here, uh, we just launched the Crosstown project with the one Crosstown, and uh, that's where you get all the information, including pictures, floor plans, everything you need. The only thing that change, of course, is the availability and the prices, which if you email me, I'll send you what is available. Um, please be specific. Say, hey, I'm looking for one bedroom or one plus 10, or my budget is 500, and I'll, I'll send you what you need. I can't really send you, you know, 500 different floor plans. Okay, um, youtube.com slash Jesse Kaplan is where you find my videos. Uh, recently I posted, should I invest outside of Toronto? I think this is a very, very important video because it shows you that you have options. As Toronto becomes more and more expensive, uh, you need to look for other options to invest, otherwise you get priced out. But you're not really priced out if you're willing to look an hour or a little bit more out of the city. And they're very good options. Don't forget, Toronto used to be $200 a foot when I started working here. So now it's uh, you know seven times that, eight times that, but other places are still available. Um, we're also launching 900 uh, St. Clair, St. Clair West. So I have uh, all the information for this project. It may not be available online yet, but I do have it. So uh, very nice project, reach out to me. Uh, Metalworks uh, in Guelph has a three units left as of uh, last night under the $400,000 range, only three units. But these are, to me, very good uh, investments, possibilities, because they're affordable and, you know, growth, Kitchen and Waterloo is growing. Uh, later on, it's gonna be London, Ontario, Brantford, Hamilton, of course, so on and so forth, okay? Uh, society condos in London, uh, these are geared towards the students. You know, I went to Western for my master's. Uh, there's thousands of students coming and going into Western every year, two, three, and four years. Uh, they all need the place to live, and of course, London is growing, more students, more jobs, more teachers, more professors, more support staff, more cleaners, more everything, more people to feed, to close, to house, on and on and on. So if, you, if there's a university as good as Western, it's for smart investors. That is true, because smart investors invest where the market is hot. The market is hot, but people want to be. So. London is a good place and a lot of people that finish university, they stay in the universities whether they're hired by companies in the areas uh, or they work in university or they service the universities themselves. So these tend to grow by themselves. So being around universities is always a good idea, okay? Uh, now I'm gonna show you a couple of listings that I just came on the market and I think they're really cool and I wanted to share them with you because no one tells you this. So there's uh, a Dover Court, this is the art condos and there's a little uh, townhome unit here. And I just wanted to show you this. It came on the market just now at 998, um, 10-foot ceilings, over a thousand square feet. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many square feet, but it's over a thousand. I'm sure I can get you a floor plan too. So that's a really nice uh, unit in my opinion. Um, the million dollar homes are no longer available. You know that a lot of the detached are now one five and up. Um, if you want to live uh, Queen West, you definitely cannot get that kind of a deal on a detached. I think Beaconsfield House is at two and a half million now. So, um, this is nice. This is a good option to live. It's a very, very nice uh, townhome, ground floor unit. Got some nice art in there, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I think that the finishes are nice. Um, the layout looks great. So, this is a very good option if you're looking for a bit of space in the Queen West area. Very nice subway tiles in the bath, full enclosure. It's pretty good. Okay, so I like this one. Uh, this is unit 315. 
at Adovaco. If you want information, I'll post it or go to yossi.searchrealty.co and punch in uh, Adover Court. I think you have to write Toronto, enter, and then Adover Court. I think that's how it works best. Uh, I had a couple other units to show you, and I'm quickly going to go over them, and then we're going to talk about what they really don't tell you about. Uh, but I want to tell you about 70 cars. So this is uh, Queen and Bathurst area. It's uh, If you go north of Bathurst, just north of Queen on the right side, uh, just below the big park there, Alexander Park, that's where this project is. So you literally uh, uh, buy a really beautiful park that has just been renovated. Uh, there's also a community pool and a community center there. It's very nice. And then you're basically halfway between Dundas and College, just east of Bathurst. Okay, very nice. So these don't come on the market often, but they do. They're really nice. Their location is phenomenal because they're built uh, a bit while ago. Not that long. I still remember they were built. Um, they give you a much better option here because those units are built a while ago a little larger, so there's more space. Okay. On the flip end, of course, they may need a bit of reno if they, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this unit, of course, but if you like it uh, to even more modernize, you could do that. And as I mentioned in other videos, we have a great crew that does renovations. Uh, they could build a whole house for you. They're doing one at uh, Avenue and... Uh, Avenue in Lawrence area. It's a six million dollar home. I'm building it. It's, it's phenomenal. But kitchen and bath. Uh, the same team that did the summit. And um, if you need a renovation, you can ask me, and I'll, I'll guide you to some of the best people in town. And they're reliable. So that is a uh, seventy car unit twenty one. Asking is nine eight eight eight. It's, it's a large unit, uh, a rare two bath, three bath, three story townhouse in Harley Queen West, boasts 1440 square feet plus 360 rooftop terrace. So that's good, that's like 1800 square feet of living, nine feet, uh, nine foot smooth ceiling. Very, very nice, okay, so that's cool. It's definitely good value for your money, okay. And uh, there's a lot of units now in the million dollar range, a lot of them, um, which means a lot of, are priced out and that's why we start to look at units outside of Toronto okay um, because you know if I'm a typical investor and I want to invest four to five hundred thousand that means that my deposit is 80 to a hundred plus your expenses of closing closing costs uh, land transfer you know if you're out of Toronto it's not double but you got to pay there's all kinds of payments to be made so leave yourself uh, a few percentage points there to do all the closing and if you want you can ask me or your lawyer um, how, how much are the closing costs? You know, we'll calculate it for you. No big deal. Okay, so that's uh, 70 car. A couple more here. Today's going to be a shorter video because it's a very busy day with offers and assignments and you know all the good stuff the real estate has. Um, another building that keeps catching my eyes is 88 Harbor. 88 Harbor is a new building. Um, it's right by the water. Call it the South Core. It's literally finished. There are quite a few units on the market, but what's interesting here is that we can find units on very high floors with nice, nice views. So if you come from Asia, you know, if you come from Hong Kong for a large city in, in China or other places in Asia, um, you know that high floors with views are very much desired uh, in this community. So you'll find a lot of people from the Asia background buying these units because in their culture there's a great appreciation for high floor and view the higher the floor the better the view is the better so investment opportunity galore here um, you can see the view here by the way this building has 75 stories there's two penthouse levels and thank you for two of my colleagues that helped me understand this uh, there's a sub penthouse level the two level the top penthouse level the one level uh, so this is 10 this is a 64th, 6406, and go back to the picture of the view. Here it is, unbelievable. So a lot of value here, a lot, a lot of value. You probably recognize most of the building you see here. Okay, brand new building, unit is nice and staged. Okay, there are a few units in this building. Um, a couple of penthouses in the two and three million dollar range to me very very good investment here you got 77 7 square feet of place of finishes probably more than cheap these units are very good okay these units are quality units quality building it's a two bedroom two bathroom so just shy of uh just shy of uh 
800 square feet. You ask me 950. So I'm putting the calculator here. I don't know if you can see it uh, in the video, but I'll just do 950 zero, 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 divided by 777. And they give us 1222 a foot. 1222.65. But that's very good. I mean, a lot of these units in this building, especially the high floor, you're looking at 1500 a foot. So the value here is reasonable. So you saw you can get a, uh, uh, like a townhome situation at uh, Queen and Bathurst. Uh, 1,400 square feet, whatever it was, for a million, you can get this one, almost half the size, uh, for about the same price. So, there are a lot of options, um, but you know, they're still close to a million dollars, probably a little more with the closing cost. So, it, it's still shunning away a lot of buyers that, you know, I can't spend a million dollars on a unit, and then, you know, even if you get a rent of three or four thousand dollars a month, you still got to put more than 20% to at least make it to the equilibrium point. Equilibrium is where your expenses uh, and your income are equal, they're equilibrium, okay? So my expenses as a landlord, which are mortgage if I have one, and a fixed cost, which are the condo fees and the municipal taxes, must be equal uh, or less than the income I get, the rents, in order for me to make money on the unit. Uh, some people see long-term investments and therefore, they would um, buy a unit that at the 80-20 maybe does not break even, so they'll do one of the two following things, and no one tells you this. Uh, the first thing they would do is they will put a higher deposit, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent, some of them pay cash. Um, so you can calculate, you can ask me, I can do it for you, or your mortgage broker can do it for you. Um, how much do I need to put down in order for a certain rent to be at equilibrium with my expenses and landlords. For example, uh, Yossi, if I buy this unit at 50 and I put down 30%, what would my monthly expenses be? Okay, so they'll be, they'll have, of course, uh, three components that we mentioned. One is the mortgage, if you have one, uh, and then that is depending on what price uh, you buy the unit, how much money you put down, the rest is your loan, and of course, the loan terms. And at the same time, you look at the taxes and condo fees here, uh, I got 545 monthly association fee, so that's the condo fees. Um, it's an American speak here. Uh, and the tax, you're probably not assessing, but you can estimate 1% of the purchase price um, or the assessed the assess number, which would be usually lower than the sale price, because in Toronto, the assessed price are lower than the sale price, at least this time. That's a whole other video. But just to understand, um, in order to grab you like this, you can put 20% down, uh, assuming you get a mortgage, or you can put more down, and then you can rent the unit and basically take uh, the money left over from the rent as income, okay, rental income. And you can do it with a million dollar unit too, or you can do it with a four hundred thousand dollar unit. But obviously, with a million dollar unit, you're going to need more deposit and much higher rent than a four hundred thousand dollar unit. But when you buy the four hundred thousand dollar unit, obviously your renter is going to be of a less financial um, class. So they're looking to rent something cheaper, therefore they buy in a cheaper, or they rent in, in, a, in a, a cheaper unit, the rent is less. Okay, so it all works together. And once you've done this exercise many times over, you kind of start to see the pattern. So see the pattern. So, you know, there's something for everything. There's a lid for every pot, as they say. So when you buy the million dollar condo, uh, you're going to need to get a certain kind of tenant for it. And when you buy the $400,000 condo, that's a different kind of tenant. I'm not saying this is better or worse, they're just different. And, and you need to understand your investor profile. That means what's your ability uh, to invest and what you expect out of it. And then you start playing with these numbers, and you get an idea of how it works, and then you go and pick your units, okay? But, you know, in the case of uh, like an opening like uh, Nahar Sinclair, or in case of there's only three units left under 400, obviously, uh, the crowd smarts have spoken here and they went for these units um, and because 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 people went for these units um, other people believe that this is a very high chances of success that's called the crowd smarts okay well the potentiality of this investment is realized because everyone's buying it okay that's why sometimes you see the long lines or you'll see like a building sold out because something is making the investors uh, all go there or it could be cultural, you know, a group of people just all come together and buy. But usually it's more than that. Usually it's 
a lot of people see the benefit, the product and the presentation and the offering is attractive to them in such a way that they all go for it. Okay. Uh, I think I have one or two more and then I want to show you some very interesting uh, news article. I'm going to discuss them because they're very important. Okay, so there's another one at uh, $100. But there's a bunch of them, you know. Um, so I'm just going to show you a couple just to give you an idea. Uh, but here's a unit. It's a vacant unit. Also 948 to 950 like the other one. is unit 6802. So that's higher level. Four levels higher, but uh, two bedroom, two bathroom. Smaller unit. doesn't tell me exact uh, footage here, but it, it's a bit of a smaller unit. If you look at the condo fees, you can also get an idea. 580. So that's actually more. Maybe it's got a parking and the other one did. It does have a parking. Okay, so that could be it, um, but it seemed to me the unit may be slightly smaller. Nonetheless, you can start to understand that a unit in the 700, 800 uh, square feet range uh, run you 900 to a million in this building on a very high flow with you. Okay, so that's what it is. If it fits your investor profile, great. If not, find something else that does. That's also good. Um, this is cool. Um, this is an area I usually don't talk about, but, you know, a very uh, nice unit, 6 Parkwood, so just to show you. Uh, nice lobby, spacious, nice and clean, good design. Uh, I love the kitchen here. Okay, terrace, light. That's what you need for comfortable living. You need to have like nice light, good space. I always look for good space. Bright, beautiful. Okay, so that's that's some amenities here. De very decent living uh, here. So that's 751 square feet. Uh, here's the floor plan, so it's a two-bedroom split plan. Okay, there's kitchen along the wall, which is really nice um, because it leaves some room for it leaves some room for your living room. Sometimes you don't get that. Here you do, so that's great. So 750, so that's a thousand a foot. Okay, 751 a foot, so literally a thousand a foot less less whatever. Um, but we'll call it a thousand a foot, 990 a foot, built in 2017. Sinclair, Sub, Sinclair West Subway, very nice, thousand a foot, not bad and good deal. Okay, that's it for the listings. Now I want to talk to you a bit about another thing that they don't tell you about is the value of the dollar, inflation, how this whole thing works, okay? So first of all, when I put value of dollar in DuckDuckGo, which does not track me like Google does, okay, so use DuckDuckGo, it's very good, and also use the Firefox browser, it's very good together, you get a bit more privacy, and not only that, you also get a bit of um, objectivity in the post. That means that if it doesn't track you, it doesn't know what you're looking for, it doesn't try to, like Google tries to give you either what he thinks you would like or what he wants you to see. In this case, um, you know, it, it doesn't know. DuckDuckGo doesn't know where I come from. Um, if you use a VPN, use it. So you get more objective results. At least we hope so. Um, so the one US dollar is worth 1.34 Canadian dollars. So people that are coming from out of Canada usually trade in US dollars because that's the global coin these days and has been for many years. Um, they get a 34% discount on Canadian real estate. So we Canadians, we pay 750 Canadian dollars for this property. They look at it and they go, it's really only cost us 500 US. Because they have US to go, really? You get this nice one of 500 US? They're so cheap. So we think of a thousand dollar foot, but they really think of seven fifty a foot or seven hundred foot or six fifty a foot. So that's how it is. You know, I come from overseas, and when I grew up, it was all in U.S. dollars. Of course, uh, you know, there's a local currency, but nobody really cares. It's all about U.S. dollars. Okay, so that's very important uh, to see. Uh, can I reverse this just to show you their perspective? Okay, so if I put one Canadian dollar, it's seventy five cents. Okay, so that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. I only need 75 cents that I already have to buy one of your dollars and I get so much more because Canada is still cheaper than most of global cities. It's not, Toronto, as expensive as it is, it's not even in the top 10 most expensive cities. Maybe Vancouver, but Toronto is not. So immigration with money is coming here, buying a lot of expensive properties at a huge discount, huge discount. And, you know, there's half a million people coming to Canada every year, maybe three, 350, get the papers, and the rest are like refugees and maybe visas or tra whatever it is. I don't, I'm not really an immigration expert. Um, but if they come from a country 
that US dollar is predominant, uh, they find Canada very cheap and they can buy expensive units. So inadvertently, um, this does add, in my opinion, to the cost of living because people come from outside with lots of money. Um, they can buy anything they want. And then we Canadians, uh, I'm a first generation Canadian, but nonetheless, um, I work here, I live here. You know, I have to deal with Canadian dollars day in, day out. I don't have a source of US dollar income. So that's the thing. Okay, so very, very important to understand. Um, I want to show you uh, one more thing. Let's see if I can. Uh, value of dollar over time. Yeah. Okay, watch this. So you can see all these graphs. So basically, what happens is the value of dollar over time is always drops. It drops like a rock. I've shown you in other videos this stuff too, and you can see the line is dropping. What's coming up is inflation. It's coming up is how more expensive things are because if today the dollar, one dollar bought me a meal, tomorrow I need two dollars to buy the meal. So the, the cost of the meal is going up, the, co the, the value of the dollar is going down. That's called inflation. It's built into our economy. And one of the, so when you go and you have your job and you make 60, 80, a million dollars a year, it doesn't matter. Every year you get a small increment increase, maybe two or three percent on average, maybe five percent if you like top of your class. Okay, but that's not enough because inflation will always beat that. So you have to have a way to store your value, to put your money somewhere. If you go to GIC one or two percent, it's a joke. It's below inflation. You're actually losing money on the GIC. That's why a lot of people buy real estate because the real estate prices rise because of inflation. Okay, that's what it is. I mean there's a lot of other factors, immigration and growth and that. Uh, let's go. The USD, but the Canadian is very similar, and you can see here. Um, currency in circulation. So here it shows you that the more money is in circulation, uh, the less the value of the dollar is. And the dollar today is about something like 2% of what it used to be, literally 2%. So for every dollar that you had maybe 60 or 80 or 100 years ago, you only have 2% left. That means if great, 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 great grandpa stashed a million dollars in the bank or under the mattress kind of thing, okay, it's going to be worth only 20000 today. So, but if grandpa went and spent that million dollars, you know, 100 years ago, you would have owned half of Toronto by now. Uber billionaires. Okay, so that's what I mean. That's very, very important for you to understand. That the, the reason, that, the main reason why real estate going up is this. It's just this. Yes, there's supply and demand. Yes, the immigrants. Yes, people coming here. But eventually, like, you see what happens? Like, you just, you just... You can't keep that. Like what was one dollar now in this graph is maybe five cents, two o two. So it's about two cents last time I read now. Okay, so this shows some historical. Uh, I don't care for that. Dollar is worth less and less every day. So what are you gonna buy that will, re will retain value? So you got gold, precious metals, stock, bonds, real estate, kind of the main things. Okay. Uh, I don't know anything about um, those things. I only know real estate. That's all I care about. That's all I think about. That's all I look at. That's all I research. So that's one way to do it. That's what we're here for. That's why we're watching this video. Okay. Um, having a post. Now take all these media with a grain of salt. You know, half post is a media outlet. Um, every media outlet has an agenda. I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm not saying it's right or left, I don't care. I just know it's an agenda, so I need to look at it with a grain of salt and kind of just realize what's going on here and read it carefully. Nonetheless, Canada's first time home buyer incentive could backfire a little So apparently, um, there's a plan to pay new home buyers, the government will become partners with you. They literally loan you some money. Uh, they'll buy up to 5% of an existing home or 10% of a newly built home and they will take a chair back only when the participating seller sells the house. Okay, what a terrible idea. This is one of the stupidest ideas I've ever seen. Uh, if the government wants to start buying your homes, whose money are they using? It's your money. Okay, so it may not be the Yossi money, it's a cumulative money that we're all paying in taxes, but do we want to take our tax money and start buying homes for others 
I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a noble idea, but is it reasonable economically? Um, personally, I would probably, I mean, I haven't seen the numbers on this, but just looking at this is a really terrible idea because it just means that people that, you know, like if I can afford 500,000, now I go for 550,000, they're gonna pay the rest. But the mortgage broker says I should only buy 500. Now I can buy 550. So that's not good because now it puts me in a high risk category. That's basically the government creating a sort of a subprime. Very, very bad idea. Okay, very, very bad idea. I, I, I don't think that. I'd rather see the government building rental purpose, uh, building lots and lots, thousands and thousands of units for rental purpose. Um, and you can live there safely. You're not going to get thrown out. It's going to be a good building and the rent will be reasonable. That's, that's I think, what we need to do as a society. We need to provide uh, people a way to live, but it doesn't mean you need to own it. You can rent it, and why don't we use that money uh, to create good, quality, safe, designed communities which have rents in them, rental units in them. Maybe they're not all rental units. That's probably not a great idea, but a mix. Maybe if the condo building should have a mix of rental units. You know? I don't know. There's lots of options to skin this cat. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but to me, it seems that if the government is using my money to basically help me buy, it just doesn't make any sense. When I say my, I mean me as a Canadian well, citizen, as someone that lives here, as, as part of the society. See? Let's see what happens. Maybe it's just an election thing. Uh, here's another one. Yeah. Another perspective on this topic. How, here's how far millennials give house prices to fall in the NC. So basically, it shows you, it basically tells you how's are really expensive and you know in Vancouver they need an $800,000 discount to buy because they you know like basically they're only making uh, the young people make 25 to 34 and they're not making enough money so they need to make more money to buy the house but they don't make enough money so here's my idea first idea is the government will pay you five or ten percent and the other and by the way, what happens when if, price, if house prices fail? Then my investment as a government, as people of Canada, is down. Oh, good. Let's just build rental units. Give people places to live. Uh, and here, nobody said that someone's 25 years old actually needs to own. That's, that's kind of young, in my opinion. Um, very generally speaking, I mean, I mean, why not? If you're a hustler, entrepreneur, whatever, you got the money, your family has the money, sure, go for it. But... Um, The house prices, they're not going to fall because of inflation, because of this stuff, okay? It cannot, because if that falls, then the whole system is broken, riots in the streets, you know, all that stuff. Nah, if that's that's a doom and gloom. We're not going there. Um, what we need to do is we need to provide people with affordable housing, yes. Um, but do we need to pay so they can own? Not necessarily, you know, like... I don't know if this is uh, maybe maybe in Sweden, you know, but here I don't know if that's the right mix for this culture and how we manage our society, you know, how we govern ourselves. And I'm, I'm, it's not about right or wrong. It's just I don't think it's the right fit. Um, the right fit is for, for the investors, the entrepreneurs, to go and buy units. And like I said, if you can if you can afford uh, if you can afford a thousand bucks a foot, you have an idea here. If you want something cheaper with a rent guarantee, you can go here. If you want uh, $400,000, there's three units left as of this morning uh, in, in, a, in a beautiful city with very smart people all around you. University of Guelph, fantastic place. You can go here. If you want to pay a little more, it's in play, you can do here. You can pay 1800 a foot. You can be a Queen West and so on and so forth. Okay? So, you know, the whole way to look at this, I think, is, is not the right way. And I think we're going to see more people buying in other areas. Should I invest outside Toronto? I think that's really the question here. Okay. Um, would you live in a condo without an oven? 162 units. It's just down here uh, in this downtown building. Don't have one. So, first of all, I have to tell you, I was not aware that these units don't have an oven. And I would, probably wouldn't be unless it was in the start, of course. It got uh, circulated uh, around quite a bit the day it kind of came out and then disappeared the day after. But you know what? Say you have a bachelor unit and it, it's got a, a... This looks like a regular microwave for me. I would never eat from a microwave, by the way. But maybe it's got a convection oven, like he says. So, you know, it's, got, it's fine. 
I think from the 24 to 35, 25 to 34 um, market segment, like, like here, this one, okay? So maybe it is a good up opportunity for me. I mean, I was work I had three jobs when I was in this age. I had three jobs. I had a nine to five job. I do it, corporate job, uh, computer stuff. Then I would go to the gym, work out for a couple hours, and I go home and I would work my little business where I was giving, doing computer services for people, whatever you need, I just go do it. On the weekends, I would go work at sales centers for real estate. That's what I did, and that's how I do it for many, many years. Three jobs, everything was cool, I had a great time, I managed to go out, I had a dog, you know, everything was fine. I worked really hard, but I did it, you know, you gotta go for it. So everything's possible. Um, and if you need to start in a place like this, there's nothing wrong in it. It's a brand new place. Your King West is a really newsworthy, this item. Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, the idea is that we need to start getting used to changes. Uh, if you're old thinking and you can't modify your thinking, and your thinking is not flexible, you are not going to be a good investor and you're just not going to get it. Okay? Gourmet Kitchen, asking system 50 a month. I think they'll get a lot more. Other studio, 1850, while one bedroom price 2100. These are reasonable rates. Uh, King West, you know, getting four bucket foot now. You want to rent the Thompson or Fashion House because they got the nice pool and the nice buildings and the high ceilings and all that stuff. And you're going to be paying at least four bucks a foot. So, you know, you're going to pay at least 2000 for a bachelor, 24 for a one bedroom. And close to three for a smaller two bedroom, say uh, 750, 800 square feet. Okay, so to me, I just look at everything as an option, as an opportunity, and see what you can bring from that. I, I suggest you do the same. Uh, here, I'm going to finish with this. I'll show you Toronto area home prices, sales rise, prices, sales rise for fifth consecutive month. So, what happened? The price, the, the house is going to go down, it's going to crash. No, it's not going to crash. It cannot crash. If it will crash, there will be riots in the streets. The reason the price is going up is this. The dollar is worth less, so it must push everything up. This is why you're paying so much for everything. Everything. So you got to find the deals. You know, I go to the coffee shop and get this beautiful uh, espresso, but they have a deal. So I go for the deal because, you know, like, it's important to understand to spend your money on something that's value. The moment I consume this coffee, there's no more value for me. But I can take that coffee and I can invest it, you know. The price of this coffee, say $3, is enough to cover interest for a loan somewhere. But think about it this way, you know, like if, if you gather up your change, you will eventually gather up a million dollars. That's the thinking. That's the thinking about real estate. That's why I'm so old school. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay. I wrote an article very, at the very beginning, how to buy a condo with six bucks a day. And the idea was that at the times they were cheaper, so maybe cost you more a day, but you know, the coffee also used to be only 50 cents then, or a dollar, whatever it was. <clears throat> and um, the idea was that you get an interest only loan uh, after your deposit, you run your property, and then you extract money by way of rental income or by way of appreciation, <clears throat> and later you catch up. But the idea was to get the property now let it run a course because the price has to come up you know it's, it's, it's not a mistake it's by design i've been telling you this by design uh so get what you can now because tomorrow it's going to be more and the day after it's going to be more and the, but you know it's boiling the frog it goes up little by little by little you, maybe you don't notice it but i have this one client we're looking at properties for six months or 12 months, over a year actually we're looking for <coughs> excuse me um and when we start looking, we start looking at the six hundred thousand dollar range for a two bedroom, and now he had to pay six, uh, almost seven hundred for one plus ten, because in the eighteen months that passed, and he saw that couldn't have found it, just wasn't focused. The, but that thing cost him one hundred fifty thousand dollars. The lack of focus. Okay, so you need to be focused. If you're gonna buy, get focused. Give me a call. We have a quick call on the phone, on person, and we basically talk like. What are your goals? What would you like to do? Uh, what are your financial abilities? Where are you stationed now? Do you have any properties you can you can uh, get some money out, flip or sell, uh, or extract some value, or anything that has to do? Of course, everything complete privacy. And then we look at your options and we say, okay, we, you know, let's let's focus on a few areas or a few buildings. We focus down, we zoom in until we find that specific unit. That's the unit we go, we buy. It. 
That's it. That's it.